Today on the Nerdy Gritty, first party streaming services, the pros and cons. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Nerdy Gritty, where we delve deep into the details of pop culture. I'm Fox. I'm Dez. Fox, there's a problem, man. There's a lot of problems. With yeah, the world, like we got some warming. No, I'm talking about. Situations. I'm talking about serious issues. Oh, serious issues. Yeah, like not that Jamal Khashoggi being assassinated. By not that Crown whatever Prince, garbage uh, you're talking about oh. over there. No, Fortnite addiction. Oh no! Fortnite addiction is a quote unquote real thing. Well, here's the thing. It probably is. Well, yes. It probably is. But, I but, can't. We can't take it. We can't make too many jokes. I say quote unquote real thing because sure. it's uh, it's not an official. Well, it's video game addiction. Like it's Fortnite, a subset of yes, yeah, it's just Fortnite part of the is game, not yeah. anyway. But uh, no, an article just released uh, from a BBC, I believe the um, BBC News. Okay, that was talking about how Fortnite addiction has become a real thing, and that uh, there are parents who have kids who are like okay time to turn off your system come down and eat dinner and they'll like just freak out about it (laughs) or they'll they'll have to like pick up the kids and they'll hit the parents as they're trying to like pick up the kids take them away from the system now okay look i'm not a parent right i'm not a doctor okay scientist i know what you're gonna say and i want you i I want to wait no credibility i want to wait i want to wait let me finish what i'm saying in the face yes exactly no uh, (laughs) i'm related to fortnite he probably deserves it no so uh so there have been video game rehab where you are sent somewhere away from video game systems and talked okay. about why you're and, and spe- specifically Fortnite rehab for a few people. Um, the, it's just funny to hear that. This has gone to the extent of it's not just parents. There are bosses that are complaining about this because oh, there are that adults. Are playing Fortnite. Yeah, yeah, are are it's on the phone. addicted they can to Fortnite. Play it whenever they want. You know, and just the the issues, and that's one of the things they talk about is it's free. So, yeah. what were you about to say? I was just gonna say. I mean, it doesn't sound. It just sounds like the, a new thing that kids and that that people are addicted to. Like it doesn't sound like it. I guess, yeah, it, it's different where I can't really be addicted to Red Dead Redemption 2 and also have my boss, unless I'm, like, taking off days of work, which right. I guess would be a thing. But this is different because – but also just for kids, like, kids have always played video games too much and didn't want to stop playing. And it, it comes back to that argument between the players and the parents yeah. of, like, this is an online game, Mom. I can't just stop whenever I want to. I want. I need to – I can only – you know, uh, it's. Uh, I think it was Penny Arcade that did a comic about it, and they were like, "Look, we understand, but also get off your games. We yeah. are your parents. I don't <laughs> care." Like they, they were like, "We are the first to understand playing online games. Stop playing it now." Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just the the open letter to yeah. players of League of oh, to parents of players yeah, of League so of Legends. That was a thing. Yeah. yeah, that was a thing. It was like, "Hey, just so you know, this your kid can hurt other people and." This is the blah blah yeah like let them let them play their last half an hour so it helps the rest of us and the Penny Arcade article was just like no no your magical sword person is pretend our dinner and family time is real so you know no deal with it and I actually fall on a middle ground in there like I, I think there is something to be said for hey give your kids some more warning time like hey dinner's sure, gonna be yeah. in an hour hey, hey here's here's an hour or here's the time you need to be done right so don't and let your kid game. make choices at that point don't, but yeah and then you know what you got yourself into this for me this Fortnite addiction one what's most frustrating to me is uh the vast majority is children is kids sure and there are so many uh, parents that were quoted in the article of saying things like he'll play for 12 hours at a time uh, she's missing school. She's throwing tantra and things like that. And I'm like, you can just take the Xbox yeah, away. Just, just, oh yeah, or just take their phone. Yeah, you can just take Lock their phone the away. Like yeah, like take away the device that they're using to there, play. There this. are so many options for you to just like you know th- there's real drug addiction. Yes, and that's a real thing. And if you take the drugs away, they can go to the street corner and pick it up from some shady guy. You, you can't, like, nobody's going to be like, hey, kid, and open their trench coat, and there's an Xbox an hanging Xbox. out in there. like Right, they can go to a friend's house and play, but then you just be like, yeah, it's a much easier addiction to take away the, 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 the cost. Well, and if they go to the friend's house and play, you can be like, hey, you've been at your friend's house for six hours. It's time to come home. Right. And if that becomes a problem, they just can't go to their friend's house anymore. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Like, 
I get it. It might be an addiction, but it just seems like one that has an easier solution. Right. And this whole idea of Fortnite rehab to me is a little bit silly. Oh, it's a way to make money. Yeah. yeah. And not to mention, like, just – and the, the counter article that I read to it, is it comes down to bad parenting. And I think that's <laughs> pretty accurate. That yeah. Or just parenting that might not know how to respond to something like that. Right. Like, they don't know the technology. there Because there are still parents like that that don't understand – how it works as a dad of children that play video games right and one my son particularly really 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 enjoys playing the lego video games and there are times and i'm like okay it's time to turn it off and he'll throw a tantrum like that's a real thing that happens yeah you know what i do i don't let him throw his tantrum i sit him down and say hey buddy if you continue to throw tantrums we're not going to let you play anymore right yeah and if he throws a particularly bad tantrum, he won't be able to play for a couple of days. Yeah. And we'll say, well, you need to learn to calm down and be ready to turn on. And, my, like, you, you, you started at the head. You don't let them do that from the very beginning. My, my anyway. mom gave me a, a – a, when I uh, I couldn't play until – it was after school. I had to finish all homework, of course, and then I still couldn't play until 5. Right. And, like, so – my only option really would be like to go play outside or to read a book. Like if I wanted to like yeah. entertain myself. And then if I, if it was something, if she took it away, she would just take the controller. <laughs> yeah. It's very elegant. And <laughs> cause then my, it's like sitting right there and I'm, <laughs> I want to play you, but I can't. The controller is gone. Yep. Look, and, and I get wholeheartedly that each child's individual and everybody's going to have to parent differently and there is no universal way of parenting and that if anybody ever says, this is the way you should parent your child, screw that person because your kid is a unique Agreed, individual. Agreed, but this is the way you should parent your child. But at the same time, there are some pretty universal oh, sure. ways to take care of things. If you don't like, want your child to play a video game, take, take that Take away the game. video game away. Yeah, yeah. they're going to be angry. That's fine. <laughs> yep, they'll live. I promise you they'll live. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, let's move on. Fox, what have you been up to? Uh, well, I've been playing Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Yeah, you tell me you have like 90 episodes no, I reserved. Not yet. Not I yet. I have one more episode of the second one to film. So I have about 55 episodes currently <laughs> that I have not put up yet. Um, it's been really fun. I've had some issues with it's just kind of this debate that I'm going through in my brain about what they should and should not change when they remaster and update a game like that mm-hmm. because you're it's largely working on nostalgia because these are not games that I would like if they were like hey look new if Spyro 1 came out as it is like if the reignited trilogy version of Spyro 1 came out as a brand new game today it would be kitty garbage yeah it would be shovelware it would be like a Skylander spin off i don't care about it i'm yep. not going to play it uh, and so, but it's, so because of that, it's largely working on nostalgia because I loved it when it came out and I want to play it again. Man, I'm going to, we have talked about nostalgia before, but yes. I'm going to bring up nostalgia a lot in our conversation right. today. But it's the debate between, so should it stay, remain exactly as it was because it's working on nostalgia or should they make some changes that would make more sense in today's gaming culture right like some features or uh, I, I don't know what they would be there are some few things that are just like ease of use like um there's they added some fast travel just from level level which is great. oh yeah yeah quality of life updates are really yeah, just smart those little things. ui things yeah. like here's the thing uh there's levels where you just have to fly and go through certain like they're very different from the rest they're uh, very annoying and if you want to like There is a retry, like you can press pause and quit, and then it brings you to like the fail screen and you can choose to retry. But there is on the pause menu no retry option. Mm. And so when I open it up, I was like, I don't want to quit. I assume that would just bring me to the title screen or something. And so I had to look, admittedly, because I didn't understand, I was not I was not aware of the feature, but it just felt like, why not just add a retry button? Yeah, that seems like what like a fail like, and also just well, that's a few. just an extra step to the retry button. Like, what? Yeah, exactly. Why, why, why is wasn't there this there in the first there? place? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, but you remade it, so just add it in. Things like that. Uh, what's the what's the balance between? And that might be a topic we have in the future. But um, what's the balance between updating and remaining true to the classic? And, mm-hmm. and can you can you walk that line? Because hmm. I th- I think you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's been really fun, regardless. That's good because Spyro's awesome. I uh, have been pining over the possibility of the Room 3, or Room 4, room sorry. Four. The Room Old Sins, sure, which exists, did. but only on mobile. I saw that on, like, Steam, I think, and I was like, oh, it's at, oh, no, it's it's coming soon, or something like that. Yeah. It's on Steam. 
The, uh, the room I'm old fairly sins. Certain. Yeah, or I might have just seen it on. Anyway, the I room saw it three somewhere. just released on. Okay, on Steam. I saw it somewhere, and I was like, "Oh, you're missing this one because it wasn't called the room four. It was called the room old sins." I was like, yeah. "Oh, it's like a spinoff." He has. Oh nope, this is the room four. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, sure. I don't. I don't have old sins you're yet. That's only mobile right now. When you can go to another room. Yeah, I'm stuck in this one right the now. <laughs> nah, I used that already. Yep. Uh, but what I've really been doing is uh, catching up on some Netflix seasons that have dropped. I finished Castlevania season two. Okay. Yeah, and it was eight eight uh, episodes, and it was good. It was really good. Um, where they're at right now, this could be the end of the series, uh, which yeah, is weird. A, sh- a show like that, it feels like they have to make it that way every time. Like we don't know what our future is going to be like, so let's give it some conclusion each season. Right. So it could be a sixteen episode there show. Only eight episodes in the. Uh, I thought it was like four episodes in the first season. It may have been seven, actually. Oh, I thought but, I thought it was like a lot less because they didn't know what to do. Well, like, both were still I, they're they're half hour episodes or twenty two minute episodes. Or sure, whatever, yeah, like. and eight, yeah, so a lot. It's a, a total of like three and a half to four hours of anime, right. and that's like nothing. That's yeah, real short. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Uh, when you compare, especially to like Naruto or One Piece, One Piece, yeah. So anyway. Um, it was good. It was good. I think that they have a lot of potential to explore characters a lot more and uh, to give a better character arc to each person. Sure. I think that they had the opportunity to explore that a lot more, but instead chose to explore the uh, Dracula character arc, which is fine because uh, he's a pretty main. Yeah, he's yeah, a pretty main guy. And people in know fact, the he's the Dracula. He's the only constant in Castlevania games. Yeah. Um, but. And he had a, he's even going to be in in Smash Brothers. Dracula is. Oh yeah, oh, they've awesome. added like Castlevania stages as well as Castlevania bosses that might show up for you to. Fight. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, like they've added a lot of. Castlevania. I know that Death is in there. And I'm I really, know, like, yeah, Castle, I'm really excited. Dracula was. Uh, for the Castlevania content in Smash Brothers. But, uh, and his character had a great character arc. It was really, really I remember good. appreciating him in the first season. Yeah. That's what I've seen. And uh, the second season, actually, I think explores him even more and, like, even cool. more successfully. So, yeah. but the other, like, the three protagonists, the three main characters, uh, I don't think they explore enough. And mm. I would like to see more of them and from them. Sure. So, hopefully there will be more. We'll see. I'm also watching season three of Daredevil right now. Which is really good, and it makes me really surprised that um, that, got that they that I got canceled. You know what I'm waiting for in Daredevil? Like, when is he gonna do some sweet like dirt bike jumps yeah, over, like, over dude, buses or like? Oh, that's season three. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, finally. <laughs> they, there was none of that in the first two. He's just like fighting people. I didn't understand why they called him a Daredevil. No, the, the entire purpose of Daredevil has been like this idea of almost moral neutrality like can i do bad things for good reasons and is that okay um this daredevil this season three is a bitter matt murdoch essentially coming back and saying i don't care about the good reasons Mm. anymore this stuff needs to be stopped and i don't give a crap anymore and he now spoiler i haven't watched it but does he kill people um no he has not killed anybody yet so there's a lot of bitterness and a lot a loss of faith like, because the first two, he's a pretty devout Catholic. Kind of. He and, shows up uh, at a church twice. <laughs> th- this one really explores his faith. Okay. Yeah. See, that's and, interesting. Yeah. It's it's really good. It really explores his faith. It really explores the manipulative nature of the kingpin. There's a lot of kingpin uh, stuff in this one. That's how you get me to watch it, because he's the freaking best. It's so good. Yeah. And so, and then again, the whole moral neutrality thing, there's an FBI agent in it, and... uh there's always the question for him of like, how much can I bend the rules to actually take down the kingpin oh. or other people, or, or do I use the kingpin and to catch other bad guys? Like, yeah, how much do I bend my morality? How much can I bend the rules? And it's it's really good, mm. and I'm really surprised it got canceled. Other than our topic today, right? Yeah, yeah, they've been canceled. They canceled Luke Cage and what's it called? Uh, Iron Fist. Iron Fist. The only one left alive is is Jessica, uh, Jones. Jessica Jones and Punisher. Oh right, Punisher. Oh, right, man. Punisher. So here's so the here's the truth of it. Yeah. Iron Fist was canceled, and everybody went finally. Everybody was like, "Oh yeah, okay, right. That yeah. makes sense." Yeah, yeah, it was bad yeah. and good. And then Luke Cage was canceled, and that was like. 
Well, that's surprising. Pretty weird. But yeah. season two was significantly less good. People did not enjoy one. it as much. Yeah. It was good. I enjoyed season two, but de- definitely not as much as season one. And now Daredevil's been canceled. That's shocking. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, that this one's really good. I would have expected like, Jessica I enjoyed Jones this to one. be canceled before him. And Jessica Jones lost their um, their showrunner. Oh. Um, not, not the actress. Um, sure. Like their production Kristen lead or whatever. Ritter. Uh, not That's the production right. leader, whatever. That's the the actress's actress, name. Yeah, okay. Kristen Ritter. But they didn't lose her. Uh, but they lost their their lead production person to DC, actually. Oh. And um, and so there were rumors that it was going to be canceled, and now we're like looking more and more like, oh, that's probably going to be true. But now it also there are talks that uh, Punisher season two will be the last season as well, oh, and the man. whole thought- that one I'd be okay with. I, I fully believe that the Punisher idea could have been figure like solved in one one season. Yeah, because I really don't know what happens end of the to arc. him now. Yeah, yeah, because he's he's a very interesting character. I love the Punisher, but he kind of just needs that redemption, and then he's good. Like, yeah, you know, it's not going to be easy, but he's good. Like, he he's moving on. So, all of these shows are predicted to be canceled. Yes, and a lot of people are looking at Disney Plus. Right. As the culprit to this. Right. So with that being said, let's get down to the nerdy gritty. Let's do it. So Disney Plus is going to be a first party streaming service. If you haven't heard about this, this is what that means. So uh, you know Netflix, uh, you know Hulu, you know all of these streaming Amazon services. Prime. Amazon Prime. Where you can go and you can watch whatever movies or whatever TV shows that they right. have. They'll have their originals, but they also have an aggregate of lots of other sources of right. material. Right. Well, so for a long time they were just a compilation of other material. Yes. And they would have to pay those other pieces. so they have to pay Fox or Disney or Sony, you know, or, Sony or whoever you know, NBC, else for ABC. their their shows or movies. But eventually Netflix did the hey, we're making enough money, we could cut out the middleman and make our own. Right first party things well so that started getting really successful and it started doing really well uh, i think house of cards i think was probably one of the first ones that was did, it that i, makes I think so that was really really good yeah very popular. and really made them like a lot of money yeah and so a lot of other people started eyeballing that like wait what can we do about this and disney's the first one to go whole ham and say tell you what we're take we're going to take through the next year through 2019. Yep. We're gonna pull all of our contracts with everybody yep. everywhere, and we're taking all of our first party IPs and we're doing our own first party streaming service. This will be Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic. Right. All five of these things will be on Disney Plus. They will have all of their already produced things on it. Yes. As well as they will be making first They've party got series. Lots of plans for original content. Original content that specifically will only for be Disney on Plus. Disney Plus, yes. So we want to talk about the pros and cons of this, how this could really be cool, how this could be really crappy, what this is going to mean for us as viewers and things like that. So Fox, uh, this is something I've actually been paying attention to for a while. Sure. You knew pretty little about it, though, yeah, when I didn't, we first I didn't, came to it. I learned that it was called Disney Plus today. Yeah. yeah. So what are your thoughts on this whole thing? Um, I mean, I'm not surprised. Like, if Disney wants to... I'm not surprised that they're taking stuff from other services. Right. They want to entice people as much as possible to go to their own first party to pay them for it. Uh, of course, it'll just turn out to be like every other streaming service where one person pays for it and then 50 other people have the password to it. <laughs> uh, no, but they, they I'm, not, I'm not surprised that they're taking stuff away uh, from others. I'm a little disappointed because I don't want to pay for another one. Um, and I already have the, the few and there are some See, things that I really want to watch still. <laughs> and here, here's kind of the thing, though, is you're disappointed because you don't want to pay for another one. Yeah, but you will. There's not a very good chance of me paying for Disney. Really? Plus. No. Oh, not I will. Really. I was talking to Jackie about it, and I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I, I picked Disney Plus over Netflix. I would not. No. Um, mainly based on like the content tone that they would generally have. We can talk about that later. Yeah. But so go ahead. Um, yeah. This. I mean, so I'm not surprised that this is a thing. Like Disney actually makes sense for me because there have been like HBO Go, 
but they've always made their own personal content. This right. is just basically the streaming service to watch that content. And so this is it's not surprising that Disney is the first, as far as I know, non like they had a Disney channel, but that was just kind of an offshoot. They have like the Disney like they're basically just conglomerating everything they have into one streaming service and they have obviously the resources to do that so mm-hmm. if you were to tell me that probably if you were to tell me like oh a big company's doing this i'd be like yeah, it's disney that makes sense yeah because they have it does just um, make sense uh i do i think they're a good company to do it also because i didn't know that they have national geographic i mean their other brands are basically all like pop culture type things but they they are going to be able to do like a decent spread variety of like content tone and like you know you have your star wars you also have your pixar movies you have your family oriented stuff you have national geographic which can be a little more like educational or a little more you know uh like they usually do um it's just yeah i I, i'm not surprised but i don't want to have to pay for it to watch these new things i'm kind of just i want it to be status quo how it is right now Although I probably would have said that when it was just TV. And then, oh, DVR came out. I could watch whenever I – oh, yeah, I actually really like that. Oh, wait, Netflix? I got, I can do that? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Like, it's it's just like it's perfect now. Don't change it. But then when they change it, it's like, oh, it's perfect. Yeah, now. oh, that's, <laughs> now that's even more perfect. It's like every time Facebook redesigns itself, you're like, oh, I hate this now. It used to be fine. Why do they – and then you get used to it a week later, and you're like, oh, actually, this is pretty good. This is nice. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> so huh. I can complain about it, but it's really not that big a deal. And also, they're a business, so I'm not really – yeah, it makes sense. That's going to make them a lot of money. So <laughs> For me, what I'm excited about is the ability to watch, like, all their first-party Disney movies and things like that. Like, Sure. Like, for the most part. I haven't watched Ant Man and the Wasp <laughs> just because it hasn't been on Netflix or, yeah, or Amazon Prime. Yeah, you didn't Prime. really want to go to the movie theater. Yeah, for that exactly. I didn't want to see that in theaters, you yeah. know. And I, I'm I've just been not seen it. But the ability to go watch it or the ability to go watch Last Jedi again whenever I, I mean, want. That's on Netflix right now. But, right. Yeah. But or um, Avengers: Infinity War was on Netflix for like a month, a little while, and then it was gone. Yeah. And. I regret not watching it a second time because sure. I wasn't a big fan of it the first time, but I'm wanting to be giving it a second chance uh-huh. and I just haven't gotten the opportunity to do so. But for the most part, if I am looking for something to watch that I don't know is on somewhere like, oh, you know what? I wonder if this is on. I'd say probably 80 percent of the time it's a Disney product. Yeah, you're a Disney fan. Boy. I am a Disney fanboy. Uh, I do love Disney. Uh, but- not not in the sense that you just buy everything, but you've been to Disneyland a lot. You love Disney products content but this is and but this is like also doesn't quite have to directly with that i mean sometimes it's because i'm a disney fanboy and i want the new disney movie that's come out but also i like star wars a lot longer than it's been a disney property yeah Yeah. i liked the marvel movies a lot longer than they've been a disney property right and so yeah yeah like like the x-men movies that came out before and things like that marvel characters and and yeah marvel characters yeah so i've liked these things before they've been disney property and now Disney has them all. Disney has all the things that I like. Yeah. And so I, when I go searching for things, the vast majority of the time it's a Disney thing. And the ability to be like, it's all here now. To me, it's the equivalent of back in the day when I used to like comics and I used to play Magic the Gathering and I used to, uh, you know, whatever other nerd thing. And I'd have to go to like four different stores. And then for the first time ever, like, nerd stores just started popping yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. um in in arizona the first one that i remember was called game depot mm-hmm. and game depot was just a place in mesa of yep. everything was there now and that became my favorite game store depot may still exist but I'm not i sure. hope it does yeah but now to me this is what disney plus is it's like all the things that i want that i could watch some of it on amazon prime i could watch some of it on netflix yeah i'd have to get some of it from Redbox. i have to rent some of it but now, like, all the things that I want are going to be in one place. Right. And to be fair, they're not they're not going to, like, they're still going to put their big movies in the theaters. Oh, of course. Obviously, of course. Star Wars Episode Nine is going to be in movie theaters. It's not just going to be like, well, if you don't have this, you can't watch it, you know? Right. Because that would lose them a lot of money. I think one of the cons here, though, is kind of that idea is that for them, I'm saying from a business perspective. Right. When you have content on everything, then there's a potential that everybody who has at least one of them could watch your content. Um, somebody who, like me, I've never actually intentionally, like Amazon Prime I got because of the shipping thing. Netflix, I we use my mom's and my wife's mom's. 
uh, Hulu, we use my friends. Like, we don't pay for any of them except for Amazon Prime. I've never intentionally gotten any of them for the fact, for the purpose of streaming. Right. Uh, so, uh, dang it, I, I just kind of well, lost my point there. The, but there, is a, there is a device limit on these things. Well, that's true. Sure, but I think from a standpoint of, well, you have to buy this to watch any of it, might be a turnoff to some people. Mm. I already have these three things. I don't need another one. And there's already 100,000 movies on each one of them. I'll just watch something that's not Disney. And if I really want to watch a Disney movie, I'll pay $3 and rent it on YouTube or Redbox for a buck fifty. Like, it re- I feel like they're putting all their eggs in the fan the fanboy basket. Yeah, but if anybody can do that, it's Disney. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. No, they, that's why it's not surprising that they're the ones doing it. If it was like legendary picture or legendary studios that make Godzilla – and like they've got a lot of right. cool things that I really like, but that's just because I like those kind of movies, and they would fail miserably. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Disney can do it because they have the clout and the popularity and the content to be able to like they 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 go ranging from you know really young people with their Disney XD and Disney Disney Channel shows all the way up to Star Wars, which is now basically PG thirteen standard. Yeah. Which used to not be the thing for for Star Wars. Um. Although I think an R-rated Star Wars movie could be pretty cool in the same way that it depends. that um, you know Marvel explored that with Deadpool and then with Logan, really. But that wasn't that wasn't Disney exploring that. With that, that right. That, that's Fox. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Disney. Disney, Disney is all about the mm, family. That's good. But they, I mean, Disney has like uh, I don't know what their what it is now, but it used to be Touchstone, or Touchstone was their Touchstone. Yeah, their classics like. Well, Touchstone is what they what Disney owned, and if it was a movie that they weren't sure was going to oh, be good enough for the Disney they label, yeah. they just produce it under Touchstone. That makes sense. And, and also, it's not like, like Guardians of the Galaxy has plenty of jokes that are not for the family. Right. I always <laughs> and if you turn the black light on in here, it looked like a look like a uh, what, who's the the splatter painter, the Jackson Pollock. It looked like a Jackson Pollock yeah. painting. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a family oriented oh, joke. That's so gross. Uh, yeah, and so they do that, and like language in some of those Marvel movies is not like, especially in the Guardians of the Galaxy, but they still produce it. Uh, and so, yeah, it's clearly not the thing that's stopping them. I still think, and and you know what, I think it would be cool if I don't know if they do this, but the same way that Amazon Prime allows the HBO channel and Stars channel through Amazon Prime, yes. you can do that. It'd be cool if they had their whatever their like third party production company is that they make R rated movies through through this company. If they had their like, oh you have Disney Plus, but you can also subscribe to the Touchstone channel while you're a member of Disney Plus. Oh uh, sure, yeah. You know, and then they're not they don't have to associate those R rated movies with Disney, but you can have these movies on there. And then maybe Touchstone produces a um a Darth Maul movie that is R rated. Not for sexual content or anything like that, but for violence. And right, because that's much more acceptable. And it actually is, in America at least. <laughs> it is. It's very strange. But, yes. You know, it's okay to see people get wasted and cut in half and like explode, but yeah, they have sex and it's... Then, that's then, then it's bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing. That's where our society is in America. Yeah. So, in all in all, I am pro Disney Plus. I think it's going to have a lot of good things to go to it. We're going to move on to the cons here in just a second. Okay. But you're, as, you're, well, let's explain that. You're pro in the sense that you're you're going to get it. And oh, I'll gonna, get it for sure. Okay, I, I will get it for sure. In the sense that yeah, I understand, but I'm also negative in the sense that I probably won't get it. So to me, uh, yeah, my wife and I are talking, and we're like, no, oh, no, well, we were for sure getting sure. this. But to me, especially as a parent, the ability to have all the Disney movies available to us. Um, and yeah. I would guess that they're not going to have every single movie they've ever made available. I would guess that they not have every single, a lot but of them. I would them. be surprised if they didn't put all like the classic like Lion King and Aladdin and like all of those. I would so be surprised. So the Disney if they didn't. Renaissance movies, yeah, I think are in the vault right now. Disney has what's called the Vault, yeah, and but they I only feel release like an a few every year. The Vault to me was like, a, we're not going to like put this movie on VHS for another couple of years, so buy it now because it's going to go in the vault. But now, with people's expectations of streaming, it's in the vault. What do you? I pay ten bucks a month. I want to watch it. Give it to me. So it's not just uh, the DVDs. Like what Disney does is, if something's in the vault, they don't produce toys for it. They don't produce um, sure, like posters, just, anything like yeah, exactly. everything, like nothing. And the whole idea is they just only want to have to make 
toys and stuff for and videos and whatever else for a couple of things at a time. So I don't know. <laughs> anyway, either way, um, I know Disney Plus will have a lot of content that I want all sure. in one place. Yes. Especially as somebody who loves Star Wars and Marvel, it's going to be all in one place. And uh, the ability to see Ant-Man and the Wasp and think to myself, I don't know if I want to give them money in theater, but I also don't know if it's going to be on any streaming services I don't know. Like maybe I just don't care about Ant Man and the Wasp. Maybe that's what I'll that's do. That's a good. That's a good, actually a good. Uh, uh, it, it was fine. It was whatever. It yeah. Was a boring whatever movie. Well, then at the end of the day, now I'll be like, you know what? I'll pick it up on. I'll, I'll watch it on Disney Plus later. Right. It'll end yeah, up there. It'll I'm show sure. up there. It'll show up in there in six months. Yeah. And I can I can be patient for that, and I'll go yeah. check it out then. So I, I like that uh, ability for me to be able to just be patient and watch it at home. And not have to worry about going to theaters okay, or whatever so else. Before, I have a pretty big uh, thing I want to talk about, which I think would be a problem with this. Okay. But before we do that, I want to ask you, since you are, have already decided apparently what you uh, that you're going to get it. Yep. What would you pay for this? Uh, no more than Netflix, fifteen, ten, fifteen dollars a month. What Netflix costs <laughs> like ten or fifteen dollars a month. Okay. Yeah, Netflix right. has different like levels. That, tiers, I would I'd be very shocked if it was more than like the standard, more than twelve dollars. Yeah, that's pretty standard. If menu. it comes out like twenty five dollars a month, then I would probably not. Really? You know, I mean, I might. I don't know because one thing that I have to think about is we see as a family probably two or three Disney movies in theaters a year. Yeah, and. As a family of five, that's sixty dollars to go see a movie, and that would be if it's twenty five dollars. That's like two months of content, right? And then if you add like popcorn and whatever else, then that's three months of content yep. that I could just wait for. And if I see Disney movies three times a year, and I'm paying seventy five dollars each time I go, that's like nine months of Disney Plus that I sure. could just save that money and watch it from my house. Sure, and so. Yeah, I mean, financially, maybe I would be willing to pay 20 bucks a month, 25 bucks a month. I don't yeah. know. I don't think it'll be that much, but I think I think it would have to be pretty pricey for me to put my foot down and say, nah, not worth it. Yeah. 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 So here's here's a big uh, an issue I could foresee happening, and I think it's already started with things like Star Wars, mm -hmm. um, is a glut of content. Yes. Uh, Star Wars has already had that issue, I think. Where they're like, oh, people like Han Solo. Let's make a Han Solo movie. That oh, wasn't that great, but it doesn't matter. We made some money. Let's move on. Right. People like X, this side character. Let's make a movie about him. Oh, it didn't do that great. Whatever. We made some money. Let's make another one. Like, like there, and I think having a direct streaming service will just exacerbate that problem. I agree wholeheartedly. I love it when people, t when they take their time, when there's anticipation to something new rather than feeling like I need to be fed. Mm -hmm. It's a problem I have with Marvel also, but not as much because I like the Marvel movies more than I like uh, Star Wars movies because I mm -hmm. feel like they've just kind of gotten into a rut. Um, but it just feels like, well, what's the next content? Let's go. Oh, I have to wait four months? It's ridiculous. <laughs> there's only two mo two Marvel movies this year? There's only two Star Wars movies this year? Ridiculous. Come on. Get get going. And with this, it's just like, okay, we're going to have a Darth Maul show. We're going to have uh, a an Obi-Wan show. We're going to have a, a, you know... Uh, what's his name? Boba Fett, Jangle Fett, whatever his Boba face Fett. is. Yeah. Okay. This one's going to be based on Andor Calrissian or whatever his name was. <laughs> the guy from that one movie that was kind of okay, but not Cassian. amazing. Cassian Andor, sure, whatever. Like, like, okay, I don't care about any of these things. <laughs> like, yeah, they they are relying on people's, uh, and I'm using this in a more negative connotation now. The fanboyism. Yeah. Where it says Star Wars, so I have to watch it, and it's great. And that's fair for them to do. I'm not blaming Disney for that. I just think it kind of cheapens the whole idea of creating like a, a, a like a fictional universe that feels alive and feels interesting and feels like it has cool stories. When it's like, oh, people love Obi Wan. Let's make another Obi Wan thing. People love. People didn't even really like care about this guy, but you can make something about him. So and people will pay to see it. So let's do it. Like. That's what I think could be the real issue. Uh, an issue with this is that now there's a million things to watch. <laughs> yeah, to and it me, all feels less interesting. And to me, as somebody who cares about these universes, the glut cr that means that crappy stuff become canon, and you yes. have to justify and remember that canon yeah. and like keep it all on track. That means that like if and 
and you know that they're going to go the Netflix route with this with the scattergun. Like, you know what? We're just going to make as much content as possible. Yeah. And if 8% of it is great, awesome. We've made our money If 50% back. Yeah. of it is decent, exactly. That's what we want. And if 42% of it is garbage, whatever. I don't care. Right, 100%. Like, yeah. And so that means there's going to be so much garbage. You know, you can do that when you're Netflix because the majority of your shows have nothing to do with each other other than the Marvel shows. Your shows have nothing to do with each other. And if a show is garbage, you can just cancel it and be cancel done with it. Cancel it and move on, yeah. But if you're Disney and you're making Star Wars or you're making uh, Marvel stuff, then this is stuff that's in canon and it's going to have impact on the world. And at that point, now it's like you've made garbage that you have to include in your world. Like J.K. Rowling is suffering from this right now. Yep. She's suffering from exactly this where she has made canon in Pottermore. Then Fantastic Beasts came out and it was not great and had a lot of issues. And now all the fans are like, wait a second, this doesn't fit in your canon. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And you're kind of punishing people for knowing about what you provide. Exactly. To them. We talked about that last week. Uh, but for me, it's two like, weeks ago, two weeks ago. Sure. Um, so they've also confirmed there's a Loki TV series mm-hmm. starring Tom Hiddleston. Which is crazy and to I, me. And I just feel like it's it's an oversaturation of what people love. He is a fan favorite by far. Right. But I feel like you just give give us too much. Then you're just like, oh, okay. Like, it's more Loki. He's less special now. Like, having three Star Wars movies from way back when were really great. And then 20 years later a couple of new ones came out. And regardless of what you thought about them, it was like this big special thing. Like mm-hmm. episode one, we get to learn the backstory of Darth Vader. I love that guy. That's awesome. Whoa. 15 years later, we've got episode seven now. And then like in the last four or five years since episode seven has come out, we've had like six movies already, five movies, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, too many. and Yeah, too many. And it just starts to feel like what's the next content? Right. It starts to become content. And you know what? In like, the generic sense of the word. And, and it's to the point where I love Star Wars. Sure. I grew up with Star Wars. I'm passionate about it. Uh, one time in Star Wars Trivial Pursuit, I was the first player in the game. And I got every question right until I won the game and nobody else got a turn. That was a, a real thing that happened one time for me. And I love Star Wars. Sounds fun for everybody else. <laughs> I've never seen Solo and don't plan on seeing it anytime soon. Yeah, it was it was a bunch of whatever. And it looked like a whatever movie. And it looked like Glut and yep. and just them like shovelware. It, it felt doing like... It. Higher ups at the in the Disney Corporation said, "What do the people like? Let's get some content out there for people to pay us for." And, and that's just what Disney Plus is gonna be. If that means that your content to a fanboy is not appealing, yes, you, that you're, you're doing, doing something wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it wrong. And, and so I feel like this is gonna be a really dangerous thing, especially because it's also gonna go uh, like have a comic book problem, and that is like in comic books, if you're reading through a big series. Um, what they used to do now they just put out single issues of like there's like heroes in crisis yeah and that's that's their single issue but it used to be that if there's something like no man's land a batman event that happened sure it, chronologically it went like robin number one batman number one nightwing number one catwoman number one robin number oh, two and those were all batman that. number and like if you wanted to read the no man's land storyline you had to collect all of them. Like at the I mean, end of they, each, te- they still do that kind of thing. At the Not end of much. each issue, you would open it and it would say the story continues in Dark Knight number three seventy five. That they don't really tell you as much, as far as I remember. Like with Batman Metal, with Dark Knight's Metal, right. that was like, oh, I, there's other ones that I don't have, and then I couldn't find them. And yeah, and now so I don't know what that sto- that part of the story is. <laughs> and so there would be this is- issue where I'm like, look, I don't want to collect. 18 different single issues i do but i'd like the (laughs) i have a problem i'd like the story so you know what screw it i'm just gonna wait for the compilation version and i'm gonna give you significantly less money because of that yep and whereas in this situation there's gonna be things like okay we're gonna maybe watch uh you know avengers 12 in the future or whatever and (laughs) somebody's gonna reference something and we're like that thing with loki doesn't make sense and somebody else is gonna be like oh you don't watch the loki miniseries yeah you didn't watch that tv show yeah it's kind of the joy of like daredevil not really have anything to do with anything 
Although I would love Daredevil to just kind of show up in Avengers Four for a brief, like the like to them to go to New York and you see all four of them, the Defenders. Like, no, we got that. We got Hell's Kitchen. Go fight them somewhere else. That would be really. That'd cool. be great. But also, it's nice to not have to worry. Like they should for- just reference that. Like, that'd be really cool. Like, and I was like, okay, you know, New York is the central focus. Let's take the boroughs. What do we got? What about uh, Manhattan? Spider Man's got that. What about Hell's Kitchen? I mean, Hell's Kitchen is a, I don't a neighborhood on on, on Manhattan, Manhattan, right? But it's yeah. Like, I don't know who it is, but there are four people that are just. Oh, yeah, or just care somebody's being like, there. okay, we got the Avengers, we got the Revengers, we got these Defenders. Who else is? Like, yeah, what, exactly. how many teams are there? A, a reference would be yeah, cool. Yeah, just some kind of reference. But anyway, at the end of all this, it, it instead of encouraging me to watch more shows, that makes me care less about your main content. Yes. If there is main content that I don't understand, and you tell me, for you to understand this main content, you have to watch these five side content. I'm more likely to give up the main content than yeah, to go to the I, side content. I agree, although it depends on how much I do like. Like Obviously. it's like like for Serenity. It's a great movie on its own, but if you really want to appreciate it, watch the TV show. That's a little less of an example. Yeah, that's 16 episodes. No, I understand. <laughs> I understand. No, I'm just saying. Like, but I love those characters and I love that, so I really want more of it. That's not necessarily true with Star Wars for me. I don't care about Cassie and Andor. I d- barely liked uh, Rogue One. I am not going to watch it. You TV barely show. liked Rogue it One? It was fine. Really? Like, again, oh, that wow. was another whatever movie for me. Oh, man. I had a, it had some cool ideas, had some cool things, but it was whatever. It's in my top five Star Wars movies. <laughs> oh, okay. It really is, yeah. Sure, that's, I mean, that's fine. I mean, Look, yeah. I, I get it. Whatever. I don't care about Cassie and Andor, though. Right. As much as I like, or as much as I did or didn't like it, I don't care about him regardless. So I'm not going to watch that other show. Yeah. And I just know he's going to die eventually anyway, so spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're going to die at the end of that movie, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, like, an example of this to me is I watch um, Arrow and Flash. Yes. And when I was just watching Arrow, and then when Flash came out, there were a couple of crossover episodes, and I was like, wait, what's happening? So my wife and I started watching Flash, and we enjoyed it. And we watched Arrow and Flash. Yeah. And then Legends of Tomorrow came out, and there were some crossover episodes, and we're like, no, we're not. Now gonna it's do just that. too much now. And then yeah. Supergirl came out. Yeah, and we're and at that point we're just like, I don't care anymore. Who, yeah, like, nobody. No, I don't and want so this. the full crossover episodes. There are times that my wife and I are just like, do we skip these? Maybe no. Yeah. Some important things are going to happen. Like right. again, instead of making me care about Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl, you've made me waver on my it loyalty felt like an to obligation Arrow and Flash. And, but it's just a TV show, so you're like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So and that, that's going to be a big danger. Yes. Also, it concerns me because what this is showing is Disney's uh, protection of their IP. And that's okay. Nintendo's the same way. Nintendo, like, fiercely protects their IP. Right, which, yeah. That's okay. But I wonder how heavily they're going to charge for any usage or for, like, even for viewing of these things. Or if they're going to be like, Disney Plus comes out and they're going to be like, here's Disney Plus. Access to all Disney content. There's also Marvel Plus, and there's also Star Wars Plus, and there's also National Geographic Plus, yeah. and you have to pay an extra $5 for each one of these things. Right, right. They have the opportunity to, again, it's their content, so it's not a monopoly, but to to exaggerate, they have the opportunity to monopolize their own content, and they can charge sure. whatever they want right. for that. which, I mean, that'll kind of right itself. If people just don't pay for it, then they'll have to lower the price or change things. But, right. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh I'm I'm a little worried about like in that not worried because I don't care that much but uh, <laughs> in that same vein like monopolizing like they can already do this they fully can already do right. this but you have to this episode of this television show has to go this way where they're just dictating everything that happens rather than letting like what made Guardians of the Galaxy really great was that there was a clear voice from the writer and director. Oh, yeah. Who, uh, uh, what's his face? James Gunn. James Gunn. Same thing with uh, Thor Ragnarok. With yeah, the absolutely. GT. Their voice came through. And they, yeah. they, if they're smart, they'll keep doing that. But the more they control of the process, I feel like the more they'll be willing to control of the process. So what you're saying is that the more they tighten their grip, the more star systems will slip through their fingers? Yes. Star Wars reference. Star Wars reference. <laughs> Disney fanboys. Uh no, yeah. So that that's also always a concern of mine. But the more they just keep, like take over everything, you know, 
why you say, well, we've already got this. So let's just get this person who's on board. Let's let's sign a contract with this guy to write for us for the next 10 years. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So it could be a, a possibility. I'm going to bring up one more possibility that's a complete maybe this could happen. Okay. It's been – One yeah, more because we'll we're, we're running to an end of our time. Go this ahead. is purely just like Yo. a, a – so Speculation? This, this idea has been floated mainly by uh, Red Letter Media. Uh, 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 what's his uh, – Fred. Nope, not Jay, Greg. but uh, Mike. Mike. Mike on there. He's He's come up with this idea where, okay, instead of going to the theater, stop – you don't put your movie in the theater – you charge people 50 bucks to play in their home the day it's released. They can have anybody they want over at their house, and I could see Disney maybe trying to do something like that. I would do that. Yeah. I would 100% do Even that. Even if it's just for you and your family, it would, you know, what if... Or, or you know what I'd do? I'd have friends have over, people over, two other friends over, and we'd split it, you know, now, 20 or I guess 17, 17, 17. I don't think this will be a thing. Because they still make billions of dollars off of putting movies in theaters. Right. Um, but I feel like that's where the trend is going. See, to me, I feel like it's going to significantly lessen the life of movies in theaters. Yes. Oh, 100%. And that's already happening right now. Yeah. Like, movies in theaters are, are going to be there for, like, three months it's, these days. It's our, Well, three months is a long time Yeah. for a movie in theaters right now. That has to be a Star Wars movie, and it has to be a popular one. Right, uh, right. But what I yeah what I see happening is uh, it's already basically a fact that the movie theater is kind of a preview for if you're gonna buy it <laughs> on DVD or like rent it or if it's gonna go on like that's kind of how it goes that's where they make a gl- most a lot of their money but not all of it a lot of it comes in sales afterward and, right you know like the deals they make with Netflix and stuff and in fact the majority of their money come from sales and things like that right afterward. DVD sales yeah. and Blu-ray sales they're, are they're, huge. They get a sing a single. You would use the word glut. That's a good way to put that. Like they get a, a glut of income yeah. in one weekend and or maybe one full week, but after that, like theater sales, they just dive. Oh yeah, they, no, they yeah. There's the, the, the difference between the first week and the second weekend, even with huge movies, will can straight up be like sixty to seventy percent different. And is, by the third weekend, you're just not paying attention anymore. Yeah, yeah. Some people will see it and it goes to a second run theater in a month and a half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, and then in three months, it's on video or whatever. Yeah. But I could see Disney changing that and being like, it's going to be in there for two weeks, you know, yeah. and let's do that opening weekend and that second opening weekend. Then let's immediately get it on Disney Plus, And that way, everybody who didn't see it in theaters, now you got to go get Disney Plus. Son. Or you can pay an extra 12 bucks and see it early on Disney Plus. It's the same. <laughs> a, it's the same as the theater release date. Just watch it at your house, though. I don't know if they do that because it's hard to regulate. Yeah, only twelve bucks. That wouldn't make sense. They would have to put some kind of camera. <laughs> so yeah. They can de- like with the old uh, with the what was the Xbox um, Connect where it could determine that, like a number of heartbeats and stuff in the room. <laughs> like, um, it can tell how many people are there, and if it's too many, they will stop it. They will not play. Remember that was a thing. Yeah, absolutely. They could do that. It was crazy, and Disney will. We're approaching. They already the, are. We're approaching the Disney larity. The Disney larity. <laughs> the Disney larity. Where everything is Disney, and we are all Disney. <laughs> uh, Disney. All hail to the hypno Disney. All hail to the Disney. Uh, well, guys, thank you for listening. Let us know what you think about Disney Plus. Yeah. Let us know what you think about first party streaming services in general. Are you gonna buy it? Yeah. What if, What if Sony came out with their first? Party yeah. Streaming who service? Who if if not Disney? Who would you want to see this from? Who has the content to do this? Yeah. What other situation could you see this? Like maybe Steam is uh, as good as Netflix. I could see a video now, game thing happening. Yeah, Rocksteady yeah. or Rockstar has their – we sell Rockstar games exclusively. I could see Ubisoft doing this. Ubisoft, they have a, a, EA. A, a good variety of games and a lot – Rockstar makes one every seven years. Right, <laughs> EA. Sure, EA. You know, whatever. Just these companies that are like, you know what? These are our games, and there are a lot of them here. We don't have them on Steam anymore. You got to come to us. Yep. Us, you know. So well, let us know other situations you could see thing, this. Yeah. yeah. Let us know the situation you could see this used, where you don't don't want to see it, the pros and cons you see. Tell us all about it, guys. Thanks for listening, and always remember: save games, save lives. See you next week. <laughs>